Hey gang, Tony here with Unpacking Diesel Punk. Many of you know me from hanging out with me from the Portsmouth Airship Building Company. I am actually going through a lot of cool questions that you guys have submitted. Cool questions that came on through. We're going to try to get through a handful of them at least. Uh, but let's start off with what I like to um, show as my definition of diesel punk so that you can see the foundation that I'm on, at least where I'm coming from, if you have any questions about diesel punk itself. So the definition that I like to use, and many of you that have been hanging out with me here have heard this before, diesel punk is a method of creativity that combines the historic style of the mid-1910s to the mid-1950s with elements of sci-fi, fantasy, or even horror. But again, cool questions that came on through. Let's start off with one. This one was really cool and it really got me thinking. It is from Mark, Mark Paskin. And Mark's question is, now y'all check this out. This is a cool, cool question. I never thought about, I kind of thought about the topic a little bit, but never thought about it for a question for, for here. But Mark asked the question, Tony, if you threw a diesel punk dinner party, what food and drink would you serve? Would you serve Prohibition era cocktails using moonshine or rationing era food uh, using uh, one of those uh, government issued cookbooks? Uh, and and Matt goes on, uh, Mark, excuse me, Mark goes on to say he got curious and he found some cool links that I'm going to post here and share with you guys as well too to some um, um, uh, 40s, 30s and 40s era cookbooks. Actually, a lot of them are from the 30s. Uh, but uh, I want to po pass those links on along to you as well, too. But great question to Mark. Um, and really, when I was giving this some thought, I think a lot when it comes to especially the, the old days, like the 30s and 40s, especially from the movies that I've seen a lot of, I think a lot of breakfast. I'm, I'm a big breakfast guy anyway, but especially when I think about the diesel punk era, um, I think a lot about breakfast. What do you guys think about? Because I think a lot about, uh, you know, you see, seeing movies where they talk about, you know, they're ordering uh, eggs over easy or ham and eggs. And that's just the first thing that comes to mind. And I'm a big breakfast eater, especially when it comes to Saturday morning when I you know don't have to work. I'm able to cook that big breakfast. And I kind of envision myself in, you know, that era cooking that kind of thing hash browns and all of that so uh, i think about movies where you know they're going into the diner and everybody's got the fedoras on they get ready to place their order uh but great question what do you guys think when you think of if you put together a diesel punk dinner party what would you serve or like me would you serve do you think more towards breakfast and what would you serve with that and again i'm passing these links on to you guys so you can check them out Plus, I want to find something. I used to go to a, um, a cafeteria that was a we call it a meet and three where you get home cooking. Um, but one, it was a, I think it was a restaurant that had its roots back into the 1930s. And so on the wall, you can see a, a menu from that time frame. And I would always used to like to look at it and just see not only the food items that were there. But the prices that were there as well, too. So let's get some feedback from you guys. Mark, awesome question. Because, man, I never even thought about that, especially for this platform. But you really got the wheels turning there. And I go back to breakfast because I think the, when I think about food and the diesel punk era, it reminds me a lot of those movies where the, um, the, the characters are in a diner somewhere ordering a cup of coffee and maybe hash browns and stuff like that. So what do you guys think? Go ahead and post your questions here. And by uh, posting your questions, you will be in the running for today's episode's prize. If you post a question, then my latest painting, Fire in the Sky, I will have a signed copy sent out just to you because you posted a question here for us. So Mark, you're going to be in the running for that as well too, my friend. Thank you for your question. Another question that I have, let's see. Paul asks this question, two que and Paul says, two questions that I have. What is the catalyst that started this era and at what point in time or event that ended it? And many of you may know the kind of know at least where I'm coming from with my uh, definition of diesel punk. Um, I think it takes place 
safe to say, in the excuse me, mid 1910s on to maybe the mid 1950s. So the bookends around that, um, Paul, are usually they call it the interwars, basically World War One up until World War Two. Uh, as far as uh, let's call them uh, mile markers, because uh, I don't think that they have to be actual parameters where you know you can't go bef before or after either one of those. But at least the catalyst would be the wars. And uh, around 19, the mid 1910s. So, uh, in fact, if you look at my logo for the Portsmouth Dairy Ship Building Company, I've got 1914 there. And that's where basically, if I'm not mistaken, is either when World War I began or when, we in, when the United States entered World War I. But I use that as an indicator of the early beginnings of the diesel punk era till about. Uh, the mid 1950s. Now, some folks say, you know, right after World War II ended. I like the thought of the mid 1950s, a little past the war, and I like what my friend uh, John Pica says about 19 mid 1950s when the launch of um, uh, oh, can't even think of it now. Sputnik, yes, the launch of Sputnik, because I, I like the thought of that because that's when we go into a whole nother era which is, you know, the uh, the space race. And um, and so those are the bookends that I use. So, Paul, I hope that uh, answers your question there. Here's another question. Oh, this was a good one. This is from Ben. Ben says, when you envision a diesel punk setting, or just in times when your mind wanders while you're uh, working on a piece, have you come up with any missing technologies that exist in your vision of the world but are absent in the actual history or even the modern age that that's another great question and and Ben you had me pondering that thing because I was wondering about missing technologies that as I've been exploring the whole diesel punk era and storytelling and expressions through art and all of that what technologies have I thought that were missing especially from the history that I may inject into my storylines or at least uh you know th things like that and i really was thinking about it thinking about it what technology would i say is missing and it actually actually been after giving your thought uh, your um question some thought i was thinking maybe not necessarily a uh, missing technology but i really start thinking along the lines of um some social changes that i wish would have occurred that in our actual history didn't but many of you know in the world building that I've been playing around with with the Portsmouth Aeroship Building Company, some of the things that did not occur in history socially, I've kind of injected a little bit in this alternate timeline. Not anything overt, uh, but something impactful. Uh, for example, my big thing that I've done um, that I wish had happened that didn't happen in our true history, but I've injected into this timeline with what I do here is um, some of you may know the history if you have been hanging with me over there with that um, Lincoln survived his assassination and lived on to see reconstruction take place after the Civil War and that simple thing I wish I just wish the reconstruction uh, period actually was fulfilled after the Civil War because I think that that would have made racial issues not go away because they're still not going away but I think that would have sped up the issues that we've had racially um, instead of taking us back into the Jim Crow era and all of that um, I'm, that's something that I think would have could have possibly led to maybe some of these missing technologies in fact some of the notes that I jotted down Ben was I think maybe that could have led to who knows could we because we didn't work with everyone that was in the population and we only worked with a few people could we uh, if we worked with everyone and everyone had the opportunity to learn to go to school and learn uh, you know things uh, within the health and medical field could we have cured cancer by now um, could we, uh, and one thing I think about too is especially tying it into the true history of the era, I, 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 I find it interesting when I see a lot of those pictures, especially after war, especially after World War I, when they had, um, you know, the prosthetics that they had. I just wonder if prosthetics could have been advanced a little bit more. 
uh, especially when you think about uh, when you mentioned technology spend. So uh, your question was a real good question. You really got me thinking for days, man. So good question. Thank you very much for submitting that. Um, I think that's all we're going to share with you guys now, but I really want you to post your questions because you guys are asking a lot of cool questions about the genre of diesel punk. Maybe some things that you talked about amongst yourselves or just in your own head. Let's share them here because that's what I hope that this platform can be for you. We're a place we can uh, entertain those questions about this genre that we love so much. Again, post your questions and if you do post those, then you will be in the running for the artwork that I have. And on that note, I will look forward to seeing you next time where we unpack Diesel Pump. Thank you and take care.